Uncle Howdy will be making his WWE debut in 2K23. This coming week as part of the Revel in Wyatt DLC. Howdy will be dropping with a rating of 84. Which is quite remarkable as he's never had a WWE match. But you're going to be able to learn his moveset as part of the game itself. Bray Wyatt will also make his 2K return. Honestly, can't wait for this. I honestly think this is one of the most anticipated DLCs in 2K history. The details here are great. Bray will be dropping with a rating of 89, which is quite high. And of course, the return of the Lantern Spin. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Can't wait. Look at the shoes. Very, very fun indeed. Will you be buying the Revel in Wyatt DLC pack? Let me know in the comments section down below. This is things you might have missed from Friday Night Smackdown. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. If you smell what I'm cooking. <laughs> Grayson Waller mocked The Rock. Now, this wasn't the first time. This all started because Grayson Waller mocked the Madison Square Garden debut attire of The Rock as Rocky Maivia. The Rock would fire back on Twitter. Grayson would fire back. Obviously, WWE using this to get a lot of people talking. And the talking point is, could they do it? Grayson's been in the ring with Cena, in the ring with Edge. Could they have The Rock? make an appearance to do something with Grayson Waller. That could be interesting. Bailey would defeat Zelina Vega in one-on-one -on -one action this week. Interestingly, she still had the hair she cut from Shotzi Blackheart. Well, Shotzi appeared on the screen as Bailey was leaving. And oh my God, this segment. Shotzi would talk about the fact she was going to take back control. And she did. And she shaved her hair bald. What? This was a very psychotic, very maniacal Shotzi Blackheart laughing throughout, loving every second of this. And you've got to think, Bailey's future is going to be intense. Do you know what? Someone pitched to me, they was going to do a hair on, like, hair versus hair match. They're not going to now, are they? <laughs> Shotzi would post this onto Instagram. Clearly, the intention is clear. She wants revenge on Bailey. But we have to be serious for a moment. Shotzi seems to have shaved her hair bald in solidarity with her sister, who's undergoing chemotherapy for cancer. First and foremost, thoughts go out to Shotzi and her family and her sister, and hopefully there's a full recovery there. But props to WWE for allowing Shotzi to do this. Taking an iconic-looking character and completely rechanging that character and changing up isn't an easy decision, and to allow her to do it for such important circumstances. Hats off to WWE for that. Michael Cole would confirm that Jimmy Uso suffered ruptured rib cartilage and will be out of action for the foreseeable future after Roman Reigns and Solo's attack last week. We got a fired up Jey Uso tonight though, confronted by Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa. We would then have Paul Heyman basically blame Jey Uso for everything that happened to Jimmy. He'd mention his father, his mother... First actual mention of Rikishi in the Bloodline storyline. A lot of people hyped about that. I desperately want Rikishi to show up as part of this story. It just makes sense, especially now the Bloodline has crumbled and is feuding. Solo would take the mic and say that he would never forgive Jey Uso. We would then start the brawl. Paul Heyman got a super kick from Jey. Not only that, Jay wanted to do a lot more. He didn't get the chance. Solo kind of took the bullet for Paul Heyman. But the fact you see what they called the puppeteer, Paul Heyman getting super kicked, always fun. Next week, Roman Reigns is going to be on the show. And you've got to think, Roman's not going to be happy with what happened this week. Oh my God, they're going to talk about the battle they're going to have. Going to be fun. Bobby Lashley returned to SmackDown this week. Really cool. He pulled up in a limo, shook hands with the Street Profits, and then they left again. Now, this is really interesting to me because this vibe for Lashley reminds me of the Hurt Business. 100% it does. And there was a lot of rumours before that the Street Profits could find their way into a new Hurt Business. Is that what we're about to see in WWE? Santos Escobar qualified in the United States title tournament they got going on in a fatal four-way this week. It looked like AJ Styles had the match won. However, it would be an interruption on the Tron from Karrion Cross and Scarlett. 
beating up the other members of the OC. They're going to definitely continue that feud with AJ and Cross. But next week, we've got another Fatal 4-Way of Rey Mysterio, Sheamus, Cameron Grimes, LA Knight. The winner will face Les Escobar. Now, interestingly, the only person they had cut a promo in front of the crowd was LA Knight. What a promo as well. Very, very loud ovation for LA Knight. Great to see these yeah signs. Why didn't we have them in London, WWE? They look cool. LA Knight would talk about how people are using him for clicks and all this other stuff. Maybe I've got to make an LA Knight video this weekend if that's working then. But he called himself the best decision this company has ever made. And sooner or later, we will be calling him champ. Oh boy. LA Knight for United States champion. Would you be down for that? Sheamus looked for revenge in the first match of SmackDown tonight. It was a tag team match of Sheamus and Ridge Holland, the brawling brutes, versus Pretty Deadly. Did you notice though, right? Right during Pretty Deadly's entrance, they did their typical replay thing. They had a CGI disco ball thing going on, on like the live screen. Why? Because they legitimately have a real freaking disco ball hanging above the ring. What's the point of a CGI one? Really good tag team match though. Ridge looked great. We had uh, Elton Prince take the turnbuckle pad off. Of course, Ridge would run into it, take the leg drop, and Pretty Deadly was able to pick up the big win. The main event saw Bianca Belair getting her shot at Asuka for the WWE Women's Championship. We would see Damage Control's Io and Bailey and Charlotte Flair both come ringside with tickets. Obviously, we saw Io stalking Asuka backstage tonight. Obviously, waiting to cash in. There was also a skull. What is this freaking skull about, WWE? Next, we had Bailey and Io make their intentions very clear in a segment involving Charlotte Flair backstage. This is because at the start of the show, we had Bianca and Charlotte handshake agreement that if Bianca won tonight, they would fight each other at SummerSlam. So obviously the seeds are starting to get planted for that big SummerSlam Women's Championship match. After a KOD on the table in the main event match, it would be the people sat ringside. Don't know why they jumped the barricade. Charlotte take out Bailey. Io took out Charlotte. And then a spear to Bianca by accident would cause a DQ. One of the best spear cells I've ever seen. Legitimately, Bianca sold that really well. It looked like Io was going to cash in though on Asuka. She got her in position while Bailey was trying to get the referee's attention though. Asuka would spring up and missed Bailey in the face and escape with the women's championship. Could we actually set up a fatal five way at SummerSlam? Could that be what they do? That would be truly incredible. For me tonight, Eight out of ten for sure. Lots of stuff happened tonight with Lashley's return. Lots of stuff setting up for SummerSlam, etc. Could be a fun few weeks ahead. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Never miss an upload. Like the video. Share the video. And I'll catch you as always next time. Peace!